Thank you for following your nose to a new episode of the Fandom Podcast. I'm Evan Atwood. And I'm Daniel Sullivan. And we don't get soggy in milk. Welcome back. We are we are talking about cereal. We are talking about cereal indeed. This whole thing came about with um, this whole idea of this article that I read. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the major networks, NBC or CBS, I don't remember. Um, but... For the first time in, I think, 20 or 25 years, they actually had no Saturday morning cartoons. Which was, I mean, a huge staple in both of our lives. Like, we grew up with Saturday morning being the quintessential, you know, eating cereal, watching cartoons sort of event. It was definitely a thing. Um, I, when I, I gotta be honest, when I read about it, it's kind of like when you read about a celebrity that died and you're kind of like, oh, I thought they were already dead. Yeah. Um, and especially, too, with networks like Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, or the Hulus, um, yeah. or the Netflix, or the Dungarees. One of those. Is not <laughs> one of the Dungarees? One of the Dungarees. You know, the, the, denim, the denim pants the kids are wearing these days. <laughs> the denim trousers. And they're Thunderbirds. <laughs> um, you know, it's not like it's the biggest issue, but I do yeah. remember... One of the most awesome things to do was to turn on ABC mm-hmm. or um, if you were our age, turn on Fox because that had Spider Man and yep. X Men. Yep. Um, An awesome lineup. Yeah. Um, but what we're talking about mainly here is cereals, breakfast cereals, and cereal mascots because that was a huge thing. Um, and that kind of trails away from Saturday morning cartoons because remember, you had to have the dope cereal because if you didn't, on days that were not Saturday morning, like school days, oh yeah, you had to look at the back of the box, and if there was not like a maze or some awesome shit on there, your mind would just go haywire. Yeah, you needed you needed to be distracted from those commercials by the world's easiest cereal box mazes. <laughs> cereal box mazes that that was like that was um, you know uh, like it was the USA Today crossword of uh-huh. things because you know the USA Today crossword. It's a more easy crossword. Yeah. It's the easier crossword to do. This is what, you know, it's like you did the maze, you went into school, and you put your box in your cubby, and you were fucking charged. You were like, I nailed that maze this morning. Bring on the <laughs> shapes and the colors and the simple mathematics. Yeah, I feel like that is, like, the equivalent of, like, the child's version of the newspaper, where you're like, oh, that's interesting. That's a funny joke. Oh, uh, you're, you know, you're looking at the back, and that was, like, your first... E- entrance into adulthood yeah you know your mom was like making your lunch and like doing all the things that parents do the making your lunch making sure that you were wearing pants and everything yeah. and you were sitting there like scrutinizing over the box going it's like oh god how is lucky gonna get out of this one exactly i mean like you'd occasionally have like the word jumble puzzles and it would just be like oh, fuck that no that was hard i no, but it would be hard <laughs> it would be like like oh i found the word cereal it's a five by five block of letters. Like it's pretty evident where it is. It's I was, the top row. It's the top <laughs> row. It just says cereal at the top. I was a visual. I found it. I was a visual person. The mazes. I totally had that covered. Word jumble. I would like find one <laughs> word and I'd be like, "That's it. Get Dan Brown on the phone. I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I, I'm a Da Vinci ace, Code. I aced my college entrance exam. <laughs> yeah. And I'm and I'm I'm eleven. Wait, I was cutting out the back of cereal boxes and sending that in on my college <laughs> exams. Yeah, like, if you get enough box stops, you can go to college. That was also, that introduced, what was interesting about the back of those cereal boxes too, is that introduced kind of an idea that kind of trailed over into most like iPhone games that you see nowadays, kind of mm-hmm. the absurdity of it. Because you would look at the back of your, you know, cocoa holes or whatever. C- co- cocoa uh, puff Nugget I'm making up Christie's. a cereal to cater towards my idea. Yeah. Which is like, you would look at the back, and it'd be like, oh, oh no, Adventury McDougal is trying to get out of the Choco Mines, and it would be like a picture of him in like a, a mine cart, yeah. and he'd have to like, and the whole thing would like have to go through this absurd labyrinth, uh-huh. and there'd be like cherry raw ore, yeah. <laughs> and Choco bats i don't know you you are making up shenanigans but don't worry i am following it diligently uh, but there was always something absurd on the bat and it was yeah. some on the back and it was some ridiculous adventure it was a bizarre scenario it was super bizarre but the oh, more yeah. i think about it the color palette the the whole subplots and everything those kind of trailed over into um into a lot of modern day iphone games where you would do 
absurd things. When you think about it, Angry Birds, that could have so easily been a breakfast cereal. Oh, it so easily could have been like a, you know, here we have the outline on the back of our box. Put a rubber band here and flip these little cardboard birds. Oh, my God. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and especially, too, <laughs> it's like, imagine if Candy Crush was a cereal when we were a kid. You'd be like, it's awesome. And you pull the cereal out uh, and hit it with a tack hammer. Uh. Dan, I believe if Candy Crush was a cereal, it would be called Candy Crunch. Oh. And it would be delicious. I have this feeling of emptiness, though, where every time I'd be like, I want to play Candy Crunch, and I'd take it out, and I'd hit it with a tack camera and go, oh, no, there's none left. <laughs> <laughs> I crunched all of the Candy Crunch. I got a new high score, but I'm still hungry. I think that, <laughs> yep. that sort of leads into kind of one of our main topics, which is Cereal mascots. Yes, because the deliciousness of sugar-flavored uh, morning eat is, uh, <laughs> was, n- was not enough to appeal to children. You had to have like colorful, cool mascots to entice children into eating something they already wanted. Yes, uh, th- the morning repast had to have a certain <laughs> flair to it. <laughs> Actually, one thing that I thought was kind of cool, and you brought this to my attention, do you want to take a quick second and lead us into the... Hatfield and McCoy esque battle that ensued to give us the most common cereal uh, companies. Oh yes, uh, the the beginning of Kellogg's with uh, I think it was it was John and William Kellogg. They were brothers from I'm not even kidding. This is like the best town name ever. Battle Creek <laughs> from the town of Battle Creek, which this is like already sounding like bad fan fiction. Ex- exactly right. So John Harvey Kellogg was a doctor who had, you know, focused his career on developing, like, healthy living styles. And, you know, he had, like, a sanitarium, and he worked with people to improve their lives through health and diet and rest and and exercise and things. And, you know, he started developing this breakfast cereal. It was, like, I think the first breakfast cereal, uh, which was originally intended to clean you out in, (laughs) in in uh, in the tummy region. Yeah, oh, it, it was, he was the poo meister of cereals. Yes, yes, it was, it, I mean, the intent was to basically, he is a, an edible enema. <laughs> Which is why you have the, 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 the high, the high bran uh, cereals. And I believe in the original, the original uh, version of what would eventually become cornflakes um, was actually, I believe, a, a whole wheat flaked breakfast cereal. Um, and he worked on this with his brother, William Keith Kellogg, um, who was kind of the Anakin Skywalker of, uh, yeah, like they, I mean, like they started out well enough, like working together and creating this thing, but you know, later on, um, you know, William Kellogg would, uh, would decide to kind of take the cereal in his own route, add sweeteners, kind of moved away from the more like healthy, healthy living style aspect of, of the cereal and created something that was more commercially marketable. And they got into a huge fight about it in this major court case, and William Kellogg actually won, and he won the rights to actually use his own name as the cereal (laughs) company. So you have John Kellogg, who can no longer call his version of cereal Kellogg's, and then that uh, that was the foundation for... Uh, Kellogg Cereal Company that we all we all know and love, and then as a side note, years later, a patient of John Kellogg's, um, uh, let me see if I have his name here, uh, C W Post, uh, he eventually started his own dry cereal company, Post Cereals, um, and sold a another version of Corn Flakes, uh, and you know, uh, Doctor Kellogg would eventually claim that the recipe was stolen out of his safe by this patient of his, C.W. Post. <laughs> so you have, oh my God, I just feel so bad This is for, a, for John Harvey Kellogg, who got double screwed This is out of something that was inherently his own invention. This is a TBS Superstation made-for-TV movie epic. I know, it's amazing. I, I would, it. I would watch, I would watch young, the, the young, sexy kid's version of this on the CW. <laughs> <laughs> Move over, Vampire Diaries. So I'm thinking Shia LaBeouf would definitely play the younger, more brash <laughs> Kellogg. Yeah. 
And this then, is out, out to make money and screw his older brother over. And you know, I gotta say, Ewan McGregor should probably take up the Obi Wan Kenobi again. Especially if you've seen uh, the pictures of John Harvey Kellogg's amazing beards, <laughs> which we all know. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what's good about our casting choices is that they both fit on CW. It would work. Oh yeah, I, I would totally see it. I endorse it. So I think now that we've cast our made-for-TV movie <laughs> of the Kellogg epic, um, yep. Let's talk about serial mascots because that was yes. that 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 was kind of a big thing, and mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it still is. I, I mean, obviously, I don't watch as much cartoons as i used to actually i might watch more cartoons i'm pretty sure i do too like yes there were saturday morning cartoons but here's the cool thing about being an adult you can eat cereal and watch watch cartoons cartoons whenever you want yeah so i mean that's actually like why i mean the first moment i actually felt like an adult growing up was going down the cereal aisle and deciding i wanted to buy a box of fruity pebbles just because it had a light up indiana jones adventure spoon that was it. And I just picked up and was like, I want this. And I bought it with money I earned from a job. And I was like, oh my god, this is what being an adult is. It's amazing. And, you know, and also I think that that, because it's not uncommon knowledge that we still buy cereal in our... I had, I had two bowls of cereal this morning. <laughs> it was chocolatey. Um, but what's kind of cool about that is that I think that story you're talking about, that was a couple of years ago, right? Yeah, that was like uh, four or five years ago. Okay. That, you know. Mid, mid-20s. Yeah. So, you know, it's like mid-20s. Those are, that that's money that you buy from a job that you go to to have cereal to get a Indiana yeah. Jones caddy. Now, Light up adventure spoon. Whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it was important to me. It was a defining moment in my life. But now, if you know, it's like now at this point in our life, when you buy cereal, it's like, this is cereal that I'm buying with money that I got from a career. <laughs> it's true. Um, which makes it even feel more official and kind of empowering. Yeah. Um, You're like, yeah, I could, I could buy the, uh, the, the healthy, healthy Smart Start cereals. Or I could get some Cocoa Pebbles. <laughs> one or the other. Do, um, do the, um, the, the, the more healthy cereals. Because, like, there's the, there's the famous Cereal Bowl mascot, or cereal mascots that we all know about oh yeah um and then there's my favorites like the malto meal kind of like whoa whoa okay that's 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 another subject i want to talk about is the malto meal cereals which i i mean yes i loved the brand name cereals when i was a kid and they had the cool mascots but you know you know when you're growing up and and sometimes you know when you're growing up money is tight you switch to the malto meal brands which you know have Twice the amount of cereal at half the cost of a brand name box of cereal. And you know what? A lot of times, I kind of prefer them. No, no, no. And I have no... <laughs> you were like... I like how you said, too. It's like when you're growing up and money's kind of tight. Because when yeah. you're an adult, before that age of having a family, but you're still an adult, you're kind of... Your bank account is totally allocated to you. In, in yep. my case, me and my dog. So I'm like, all right, Josie, we're getting you, your food, and me. I'm like looking over my shoulder going, it's like, fuck the rest of the world. Me and the captain make it happen. <laughs> and I look over at the Malto meal one. <laughs> Me and the captain making it happen. And that's the thing is that, you know, it's like I'm kind of like living out that fantasy because, you know, where I can allocate my salary that I earn to myself so I can get the name brand. Yeah. Where I look over at the Malto meal, which there's nothing wrong with how it tastes, but I look over at the Malto meal off-brand mascots, which is like the Malto meal lieutenant Big crunch. Okay, now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Some of the multi meal type brands uh, I prefer. Like I think it's like Choco Dinos or something is the the multi meal version of Cocoa Pebbles, which I had this morning. Choco um, Dinos. It was delicious. Um, but other ones you'd think are the same, but are not as good. And ca- the the off brand Captain Crunches are one of them. What what's the, their what's the mascot? Uh, it's Crackles. The most uh, drugged out looking chipmunk squirrel thing I've ever seen. Wait a minute, hold the phone. It's Crackles. Crackles holds no rank in the Navy? Nope. Or Zero. actually in any military outfit? Zero ranks were given. Well, Merchant Marines? Nope. Um, private not e- security for a mall, anything? <laughs> not, even, not even private first class, Not nothing. Mm-mm. So Crackles basically, 
Just just a squirrel. He's not vouched for then by there's no he has no credibility. Absolutely none. Other than being and a this squirrel. Year, and this, <laughs> he has a super tweaked out squirrel. Also, not as good as Captain Crunch. Okay, you know what? I this is where I hate to say it, but between Malto Meal and name brand, I'm gonna choose the man who has served his country, whatever <laughs> it may be, for many, many years yep. and has a last name Crunch as opposed to the breaking bad squirrel. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Captain Crunch, um, which was which was my favorite when I was growing up. Captain Crunch was my favorite. I don't think I really had a favorite. Um, to me, it was kind of more like the experience because I grew up in a household more of Honey Nut Cheerios, which had mm-hmm. kind of the B who was <laughs> just really didn't do anything exciting because, like you know, the Trix Rabbit was wow. Now that I think about it, all the cereal mascots seem to be on some kind of drugs, super amped up. Yep. Um, but the B. Uh, we actually we let's consult. We have a list here. We have a list of all Buzz the Buzz Bee. Buzz Bee. Um, I am the authority on all things cereal related. <laughs> he is. I am the hero that cereals deserve. Deserved. Yep. But I'm the hero that cereals need because mm-hmm. I'll eat that shit. Yep. Um, but so the thing was is that um, Buzz Bee was kind of fitting into that like sort of PSA announcement mascots where because we grew up in the '90s where. You'd go to that school seminar, and there'd be some mascot that would kind of show up and do a rap about staying off drugs. Just inexplicably rapping for no reason. and Because it was the 90s. And Busby kind of had that level of neutrality to him. Oh, yeah. And what's kind of interesting, too, is I remember seeing a commercial, like, in the last few years, where he was, like, pushing a bowl of Honey Nut Cheerios mm-hmm. to a guy in his 30s to keep his cholesterol yeah, down. Yeah, like, hey, 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 guy, you, you want to watch uh, your heart health? Yeah. Be careful. Whereas Captain Crunch is like... Although that was like the worst, that was the worst Billy West impression I've ever done. <laughs> it was not good. <laughs> yeah, Billy West. But yep. like Captain Crunch and the Trix Rabbit were all sort of like gung-ho about the mission at hand. Captain, did I say Captain Hook or Captain Crunch? I, I hope you said Captain Crunch. <laughs> I think I said Captain Crunch. Okay, good. But yeah, he was so... All these serial mascots were always like much more gung-ho on doing anything but talking about the serial. Well, yeah, I mean, Toucan Sam was just constantly following his nose. Which, Toucan Sam was kind of the gentleman's mascot. I know, like, I have expected him to constantly have, like, a monocle and an ascot. Toucan Sam. Follow your nose to adventure. And uh, do you remember, like, all of his commercials somehow, some, like, some wacky thing would ensue, and he would, like, fall. I just remember making him noises, like, oh, no, oh, my. Yeah. Oh, no, it was always like, oh, no, the the jungle traps are being set. Ah, the jungle the, traps. Yeah, they were inexplicably always on, like, these weird, like, him and his, like, he had, like, three little nephews or kids or something. Oh, yeah. And they were, like, it was, like, the, it was, like, the Huey, Dewey, and Louie sort of paradigm, I where was... you had, like, you had the parental-ish figure, and then, like, the young kids who would like get into danger and would be like, oh no, we have to gotta follow our nose to get out of this shenanigans. Which <laughs> I don't remember much about those nephews, but I remember one commercial of them either in space or in water because they were wearing helmets. Oh yeah. And I think that was like probably when people were running out of ideas. <laughs> I just remember them constantly being trapped in Aztec temples. <laughs> and then eventually <laughs> they ran out of ideas and some some guy was like just I don't know, fuck it. Just put some helmets on them, put them in space, yeah, and then after whatever. that, it's like, oh, we're out of space. All right, put them in water. Keep the helmets, put them in water. What do <laughs> helmets, we do? Are, helmets are a water thing, too. <laughs> Kids are into helmets. <laughs> uh, in their bikes. In their bikes out. and their helmets, helmets and their space. <laughs> <laughs> space helmets. Um, yep. But, yeah, so then uh, we had that. So uh, Busby, he's kind of stuck with us. He's totally lame, mm-hmm. but uh, he's definitely kind of stuck with us. Um and then there are ones that have kind of like fallen out and come back in. Count Chocula was one that has always kind of lurked in the shadows. Well, I mean, he's a vampire. Yeah. A chocolate vampire. That, which is not like a thing. But those are those are the seasonal cereals. I mean, you've got... Wait, you've, Count, uh, Count Chocula is a seasonal cereal? Technically, I think you can get it year-round in some stores, but for the most part, you know, the, the Count Chocula, the Frankenberry, and the Booberry... Uh, those are all kind of thematic Halloween cereals. Okay, so... So you, you really see them out more during October. I, I'm pulling out the red pen, and I am marking Count Chocula under the pumpkin spice latte of cereals. It, it really is. Okay. Um, and <laughs> much much like the, you know, the, the limited release cereals, like your 
oops all berries and things like that where they're they come out like you can find them if you look hard enough anytime if you have an ebay if you have an ebay um or you know some stores just carry them year round but for the most part like those are the ones you like when you see them you're like oh no i need to buy five boxes because who knows when they'll do this again oh, what do you remember oops all i remember oops all berries didn't they try and market that as like some horrible experiment gone wrong oh yeah they're we, like oh no we accidentally flipped this giant comical switch and now our boxes are inexplicably full of crunch berries when you take the humor out of that i love it well, yeah, but also when you when you think about it logistically, like, even as a kid when that happened, I'm like, then then how did they have all these boxes pre-printed to say "Oops, all berries"? Once again, it's the guy. It's the same guy who was like, put them in fucking helmets and then put them <laughs> in space. It's like we made this, and this is what I'm talking about. Where it's like on the corporate level, it's like we, you know, it's like the scientist who gets fired yeah, because he, he tries to stop some horrible thing from happening. Like, he's a Batman villain now, but he's, yeah. like, holding a press conference going, it's like, we've created Oops All Berries, there's too many berries, and the corporate <laughs> guy's like, if I can put fucking helmets on toucans, I can market this shit. <laughs> there's just, there's too many berries. <laughs> no cereal can handle this many crunch berries. It's the naive scientist who's, like, trying to warn the people, and the big corporate sleazy guy is like, kid, kid, kid. You're talking to the guy who put helmets on two cans. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I've got this. I'll make your problems disappear. Come on. Milk. I'm the guy who brought berries back to life with a bolt of lightning and made Frankenberry. That's true. Um, so, one of the things that I want, I've been waiting on this. I, I've so been waiting on this. What do you got? You like Lucky Charms, right? I love Lucky Charms. In fact, when I was, uh, when I was a kid, Lucky Charms was like the one cereal I wasn't allowed to get. Because my mom kept thinking that it had too much sugar. Um, until I actually read... It was the first time I ever, like, really read the nutrition facts on cereal. And I was like, oh my god. Lucky Charms has less sugar than the cereals we had been getting. So I finally got my Lucky Charms. So you totally just went Sherlock. Oh man, I went super Sherlock. I went full-on Cumberbatch. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I was reading about this Lucky Charms, which I gotta read you this real quick. Yes. Um, General management uh, challenged a team of product developers to use available manufacturing capacity from either General Mills' two principal cereal products, Wheaties or Cheerios. Mm -hmm. So it's like, all right, we want to give you boring and boring, yes. and you need to make amazing out of it. Okay. Yeah, Lucky Charms, like the, the dry bits have that sort of Cheerios They have that sort of like... It's, it's not Honey Nut. Principally it's the same thing as a Trail Mix, you know, M&Ms with obstacles. Yes. <laughs> yes. So the great uh, so <laughs> the names of obstacles. <laughs> I love uh, it. John Hola Holahan. 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 Um, he uh, was on this team and he went to the, this idea came to him when he went to the grocery store and decided to mix Cheerios with bits of Brock's circus peanuts. Uh oh wow. Oh God, I can see that. Yeah, and I mean, then, I hate circus peanuts and I love Lucky Charms, but I can see the correlation. <laughs> and so he kind of took the he kind of took the little bit of the stoner route because I have done this before, where you know, and the, you can imagine this is where genius came from. Going it's like, hey, I like what we're doing with the Rice Krispie treats. Be better with Snicker bars. <laughs> Boom, done. <laughs> Enjoy. Hey, where's the guy who put the helmets on the two cans? I just I just reinvented the wheel. <laughs> All right, kid, don't worry about it. I put helmets on two cans and boxes <laughs> on berries. I can do this shit, too. Nice. Um, and then also an advertising company told General Mills that they should market this idea around charm bracelets, which... That came out of left field. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you know how uh, charm bracelets, that's a thing. Um, cereal, also that. Like, hey, hey, Dan, um, so I've got this new idea for, for a sugary, delicious cereal. Charm bracelets! Uh, hold on, hold on. It's a delicious, sugary cereal. Uh, it's kind of flaky. It's really, it's really nice. It's delicious. Helmets um, on birds. Also, sweaters. Can you market sweaters with this delicious, sugary cereal? Charm bracelets again. I was right the first time. <laughs> you got it. Nailed it. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, you're accessorizing our cereals? <laughs> yes, we've bedazzled our first cereal. <laughs> That's what it is. Lucky Charms is the bedazzled cereal. Which you're welcome for that. All right, so we know the cereal mascot, Lucky, who is all fire and piss <laughs> running around Ireland with oh kids chasing him. He is, he is always on the run. Um, so he's, he's the cereal mascot who's always on the lamb. <laughs> Whoa, this is the fugitive of cereal mascots. He really is. 
Okay, so no joke, he I, he committed some crimes. I'm reading this, and you can't look over my shoulder because this is fucking awesome. This I can't. Dope. You're, you're too it, tall. This is totally dope. Your I'm shoulders, your shoulders are too high. I I have Bruce Tim shoulders. As do I, but they're lower than yours. The marshmallows are meant to uh, to represent Lucky's magical charms, each with their own special meaning or air quotes power. The following explanations of the permanent marshmallows. Whoa! Oh okay. my god. There's also limited edition marshmallows we're going to go through. Oh, my so God. I'm going to quiz you um, on the marshmallows, and you have to guess what the powers are that go with these. Okay, okay, hold on. Hold on. You're going to need to keep track of this. You're going to need to... That, uh, you're, okay, I just went and grabbed a pen. Thank you're you. You're going to need to keep track of which ones I get right or super right, <laughs> by which I mean wrong. I'm, I'm just, you get one answer for each one, and I'm going to write it down, and then okay. we're going to go back and do the real answers. Okay, okay. What do you got? What are the power of hearts? Hearts, uh, I'm guessing compassion, uh, these, these are, like, when he's, like, to use in, in evading the children, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, hearts, uh, hearts <laughs> makes the kids, uh, compassionate to the plight of Lucky. Okay, we're gonna call that your Captain Planet answer. <laughs> yep. Shooting stars give you the power of? Uh, speed. Okay. As they are fast and shooting? They are verb. <laughs> they are verb. All right. The power of horseshoes. Um, horseshoes, horses, also speed. Okay. So you want to modify your first one or your second one? Nope. You want, okay. <laughs> Clovers give you the power of? Um, I'm guessing some kind of nature thing, like like a, some kind of plant-based power. Like plant make, power. make plant, plant growing power. Plant growing power. Poison ivy powers. Ah, uh, that's what you're getting for this answer. Poison ivy powers. There we go. Okay. So this gives Lucky the ability to kiss children and kill them. <laughs> that, I'm gonna that, go with the other, not, the not other half of the poison right, ivy powers. That's, that's what you get. That's what you get. Yep. Poison kisses. Uh, <laughs> blue moons give you the power of uh, blue moon nighttime. Uh, I'm gonna go with. Like darkness powers or invisibility. All right, invisibility. Invisibility. Okay. All right. Just shadowed, shrouded. Rainbows give you the power of the best parades. Wait, no, <laughs> that's no, not my no, answer. No, no, that's that's your answer. The power of the best parades. That's what you get. Okay. Balloons give you the power of ooh, uh, flight or like. <laughs> Maybe he makes a balloon appear. Yeah, flight. Okay. And the hourglass. Whoa, stop hour? time. He can he can stop time. Okay. Yeah, and again, the, I mean the 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 marshmallows have changed so much oh, over time. Uh, uh, we'll read the limited edition marshmallows, but I gotta give. Okay. It, I didn't even know there was an hourglass in there. Uh, it hasn't been in there for a while. Okay. Long Hearts. time. <laughs> the heart marshmallow, which you assumed gives you the power of compassion. Yeah, like Mati from Captain Planet. Brings things to life. Okay, so that's, that's pretty close. Yeah, but that's one wrong. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's pretty close, but it's super wrong. Shooting stars give you the power to fly. You chose speed. Damn it. Too wrong. Blast. Horseshoes give you the power of speed. You chose speed. Yes! <laughs> Redundancy helped you there. Nice. Clovers, you chose the power to kiss children and kill them. No! <laughs> Plant growing! <laughs> You took the poison ivy answer in a dark direction. <laughs> Plant growing powers. Clover, uh, clovers give you the power of luck. Oh, but wow. you will never know what kind of luck you'll get. Oh, so it's kind of like one of those things where it's like, it's oh, monkey. they're always after me, lucky charms. Hold on, I better use a clover, and then all of a sudden it's like your garden's gonna grow well this year. Like, oh man, it's kind of the monkey's paw. <laughs> you get the wish, but you never really know what you're gonna get. Yeah, yeah, that's so. Okay, that, you got that one wrong. I got that. I got that super wrong. Blue Wait. moons give you invisibility. You got that one right. No way. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so. um, rainbows. They uh, are the best, the, best parades. Best parades. They give you the power of instantaneous travel, like a parade. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, you got that one right. Nice. <sighs> nice. Balloons. Wait a second. Balloons. If shooting stars was flight, what else could balloons be other? Than flight. What is the possible answer? I'm going to give you a hint. Okay. Do, 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 do. 
whoop, dancing? Whoop, 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 whoop. Oh, you can breathe underwater. Uh, no. Oh, give the power to make things float. Oh, well then, wait a second. Why would you do the underwater theme in Mario? Because water and float are two things that go together. Yeah, but it's underwater. Shut up. Oh. Hourglass. Power of time. Well done. Nice. All right, so you got one, two, three, four right, if I'm being generous. <laughs> four right out of how many? Uh, a lot. Oh. <laughs> Eight. That's a... You got an F. Oh, dang. 50%. Oh, dang. And that's I, I failed cereal school. <laughs> and that's an F if I'm being generous. Below that you got an incomplete. Oh man, I failed the post cereal academy. That was a thing that existed on the internet with really? flash games. Okay, so I remember that from I'm kids. I'm gonna read you the um from the, being a child. I thought you said from game of child. So <laughs> no, I, like, this I remember that from from when I was a kid, from being a child. Okay, so now I'm gonna read you the marshmallows that were discontinued. Okay, do these have powers? Uh, no. That was fun. 1986, the whale-shaped marshmallow. Uh, not a, not a, whales, not a delicious flavor. Not a power either. Nope. <laughs> I have the power to I've, hold my breath underwater, but I, I still have, have to come up to breathe. I have the power to filter krill. <laughs> Good power, bro. Um, 1990, the green pine tree-shaped marshmallow. Also pine. Not a good <laughs> flavor. <laughs> It was, like a, it was like a pepperminty Christmas. That'd be nice. Uh, I tried eating a Christmas tree once. Not a good flavor. <laughs> no. 1991, Spiky. the star and balloon-shaped marshmallows were combined for a short time. The red balloon featured a gold six-pointed star. I kind of remember this. I do, too. Rubber balloons. Not a good flavor. No. I, 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 I recall they started doing the uh, like the shapes within another shape. No. Yeah. Like, the clover, for a while now, has been um, inside Lucky's hat. Funny. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 they have the dark green clover shape inside of a lighter green uh, Lucky's hat. 1994, sprinkles were temporarily added to the marshmallows because... Uh, because the... marshmallows weren't marshmallow enough? <laughs> I guess they were worried people were getting bored. Yeah. Um, 1999, moon-shaped marshmallows were modified in addition of the yellow curve line for a limited time. So we got a crescent moon. Yeah. Things I don't care about. No. Um, 2000, new sparkling rainbow because of... Sparkles? I was going to say Thor. Let's go with that one. Yeah. 2010, the swirled marshmallows were in Lucky Charms. And two new rainbow marshmallows were added for LGBT Pride Month in 2013. Way to awesome. go. Awesome. See, ahead. I got it. Nailed it. Pride. You said parade. I know. Pride parade. Pride. Both of my answers are correct. You kind of retconned it a little bit. I made it work. Yeah, no, no, no. You definitely made it work. Um, all right, cool. Um, so that was your... Here's, here, I'm going to take your notes here for a second. So these are all your Lucky Charms notes. Hey, Dan. Yeah. Without looking, uh, can you sing the current Lucky Charms uh, jingle with the, with the names of the marshmallows? Uh, that's, without looking. That's, yeah, that's, yeah. You quizzed me. I'm going to quiz you. Okay. Um, uh, I'll give you a hint. Yeah. It starts with hearts. Okay. Um, how do I get you alone? <laughs> no. Ooh, Barracuda. Nope. You said it started with heart. Yep. I know you're making a joke. I'm aware. I'm fully aware of the joke you're making. I don't think I ever knew the Lucky Charm song. Oh, you, oh it's not like a song, but it's like it's just the order with which you say them. Hearts, stars, and... Heart stars, horseshoes, clovers, and blue moons, pots of gold and rainbow, and me red balloons. That's me lucky charms. They're magically delicious. Okay. That's... Why balloons? I don't get it. Uh, because in uh, the in... Celtic tradition, balloons were seen as a sign of good... F no, I have no idea. A sign of... There's absolutely no reason for it. <laughs> a sign of fertility. <laughs> a sign of fertility. No. <laughs> No, there's 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 very little reason. This actually, oh, like wait. it's kind of a round shape. Let's make it a balloon. One of my favorite mascots, and I got it. This is so good. I love this one so much. Do you remember um, uh, uh, Golden Crisp, also Golden known as Crisp. Sugar Crisp? Those are that was kind of like us. Like it was like it was a little bit like Smacks, but not Smacks. Smacks had like the frog that had smoker's mouth. Oh, oh god! No, yeah, Sma yeah, the Smacks frog. No, no. Um, 
uh, sugar, Super Sugar Crisp had Sugar Bear as the mascot. Sugar! Oh my god, Remember? he was so cool. So high. So he, he was, was just so like chill. the coolest hey. cat around, and he was a bear. I'm Sugar Bear. But like, I remember, I had so many different phases with Sugar Bear. When I was yeah. a kid, he was like, he seemed like the cool senior in high school. He was like, don't worry, Sugar Bear will take you. you know, it's like, Sugar Bear will get you into the dance. It'll be a good time. Yeah. But then, he, you could trust him. He had he had a way about him. Uh, he was, um, so, um, he was uh, made as an emulation of Dean Martin or Bing Crosby. Oh, that makes sense. Which, the thing was, I kind of get that, but... His soft demeanor, to me, got more menacing as I got older. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, he's he's really relaxed all the time. But, like, like, all of a sudden he seemed like the drug dealer who would easily get you hooked on something. Like, it went, oh, no, first taste is always free with the sugar crisp. And then, like, oh, when, no. when you needed the sugar crisp and you had this huge debt to him he, and you couldn't pay, he'd be like, oh, sugar bear would hate to have to break your legs. <laughs> oh, no. But he'll do it. <laughs> Oh, he would too. How dare him! Oh God, let's um, you know. Let's let's hit the list real quick. Yeah, I mean, some of my favorites. What we got? Uh, I'll, I'll look at the list. Sunny, Sunny, the cuckoo bird from from Coco. Oh, Coco Bus. did mm-hmm. he ever pilot a space shuttle? Woo-hoo! I have a memory of him piloting a space shuttle. Uh, he got into so many wacky shenanigans. Uh, it would I would not put it past them. And he was cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Cuckoo. Now, that was the difference between him and the Trix Rabbit. The Trix Rabbit would, like, try something and get foiled, and he'd be like, oh, well, shit, life, back oh, to the drawing board. Oh, no. But, like, Sonny was like, I need these things. They make me crazy. <laughs> I would imagine, after years of, of trying to get the, the tricks that, I mean, the first bowl of, uh, of tricks the Trix Rabbit is ever going to eat has to be bittersweet. Like, don't get me wrong. I loved, I loved Trix when I was a kid, but... I imagine after all that buildup, they they would only be disappointing. Oh, absolutely. I think um, also. Plus, if you're going fruity cereals, I would go fruity pebbles. I would go fruity pebbles over uh, over tricks myself. I think those are a cop out though. That's that's got Flintstones character. It doesn't count. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, you had these licensed characters starting to uh, uh, endorse different different cereals. I mean, they had like what they had Pac-Man cereal for a while. Oh, they had the Nintendo cereal. Really? The, yeah, they had the the Nintendo. It was the, I think they called it the uh, the Nintendo like Serial Entertainment System, and it was it was basically Lucky Charms but with Nintendo character Who the marshmallows. Fuck is this? It's madness. Madness is what it is. Who is this on this list? Oh yeah. Oh okay. Jean okay. Lafleur. Hold on. Hold on. Of the Quaker Oats Company cereals, oh, okay. we have a list of of popular mascots. So Captain Crunch up Did- at the top. Uh, Honey Monster, you remember Honey Monster, right? Uh, that, From, I don't remember Honey Monster. Because to me that sounds like a sexual predator. You have Jean Lafoot. Who is Jean Lafoot? King Vitamin, Little Mikey, and I don't, this actually sounds vaguely familiar, I cannot remember what it's from, Quisp. Okay, some of I don't the, know who Quisp is. Uh, yeah, but uh, like... Explain Jean Lafoot, because he's the only one of the Quaker Oats family that sounds like a revolutionary. I actually have a weird feeling that it may have been a character used in a version of Captain Crunch, possibly. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's entirely possible. Quick. No, I think he might have been like an, an other, like a pirate or something of the like Captain Crunch commercials or something like that. Oh god, here was such a staple of the 90s. Um, Honeycomb Kid. From Honeycomb? That was the like the quintessential like weird '90s advertising. Where it'd be like, oh my god, this kid gets his honeycomb and he gets so crazy into it, he just crazy. turns into this weird fur ball on drugs. That, it's tweaked out. It's like the, the definition, I think, of a tweaker is the honeycomb kid. <laughs> that was <laughs> when they couldn't get the guy who put space helmets on birds yep. they got this guy who was like well i like the tasmanian devil and i also read the curious case of dr jekyll and mr hyde so let's let's marry those two <laughs> and and the, the second this kid and it was it wasn't just one kid it was like whatever whoever the kid was that was like yeah hey, no it oh, was I'm like my the, honeycomb it was like honeycomb. the formula that, yeah. you know you had that and then you would turn into a monster they, yep. and you would and you would like go crazy on a skate park because 
again, it was the 90s and everything was a skate park. <laughs> <laughs> Every, yeah. Everything no, was... I just remember all the mascots from when we were kids in the 90s rode a skateboard. Yep. And they also very clearly were wearing pads because yep. safety is cool. Safety is cool and important and cereal. And cereal. This is the one. Okay, this one is totally Safety, weird. skate parks, cereal. Boom. 90s. Mic drop. <laughs> this is the one that's freaking me out, though. Look on the list right okay. below Honeycomb Kid. Say the name of this mascot. Hunger. What? Hunger. You can't put a space helmet on that. Nope. I don't even know what that is. That is the feeling of needing cereal in your belly. <laughs> Is what that is. That hey, that's the most effective mascot of them all. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. The most effective mascot comes around when we're just naming the things that we want, and that is hunger. And with that, I could go for a bowl of cereal myself right now, Dan. Yes, let us go get a bowl of cereal from someone of a respected navy. Yeah, it's Admiral Admiral uh, Flavor Bites. Admiral Flavor. <laughs> Admiral Flavor Bites. Thank you so much for listening. Make sure and subscribe to us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, also, feel free to drop us a line at fandomworkshop at gmail.com. Let us know what you're a fan of or any suggestions for future podcast episodes. We would love to hear from you. And in the meantime, we will continue not to stay soggy in milk. Yep. Get we, soggy. We will continue to not be soggy in any fashion or form in milk. You're welcome. Bye. Bye.